Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson Guitars. We're hanging out backstage at the 2019 Eric Clapton Crossroads Festival. James Bay, what's happening, man? Thanks That's for good. stopping by. No worries, thank you for having me. This is your first Crossroads experience? It's my, it's my first, uh, yeah, it's my first Crossroads experience, but I've, I've sort of been trying to feel like I'm there since I got the first DVD. Yeah, so you're like me, we've, we've, we've grown up watching I mean, every year. Yeah, yeah, and really in the gaps in between, I would just have it on repeat. And I know obviously some of those gaps in between were years yeah. between the Crossroads festivals, but yeah, I got every DVD and I just sort of swam in it. What was obsessed. the feeling when, when your manager or management told you like, oh, hey, uh, Clapton's people called, they want you to do Crossroads. What, what, what's that? Initial, you know, it was at Christmas. Really? It was actually at Christmas last 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 Christmas just gone that I just before Christmas I found out. Uh, so it was like it was a pretty uh, suddenly it was a, a special Christmas with a uh, big present in in in, yeah. in being asked to to play. Um, just a, it, it's a sort of dream come true thing um, because of what the festival's about, because of uh, you know Eric Clapton himself being such a hero of mine, and because of the company. Uh, it's it's the dreamland. It's a pretty big uh, bill, rich in in guitar players, uh, yeah. as you could imagine. Yeah. Uh, do you feel compelled to like I, I got to bring my A game, or oh, I, yeah. are you are you, are oh, you yeah. feeling like you're bringing it to a different level? I, I I I all of that stuff happens, and all you have to do, I think, is just try and keep it relatively chill and yeah. don't overcook it, don't overthink it. Um, so I'm trying to do all of that, but there's a lot of adrenaline. And you already got some stage time last night, right? I did actually. Cheryl Crow, uh, a legend, was uh, very kind, and she'd been here the day before while we were sound checking. She sound checked before us. We were sound checking, and she hung around for it. And she, uh, we were chatting backstage afterwards, and she said, "Would you, would you want to get up and do a song?" But which I, you know, you can't turn down. Just Everybody keeps telling me that it's not like there's not like a whole hell of a lot of plan. No. Going on and 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 stuff yeah. just keeps kind of that's it. Uh, and, happening. And long may that be the case at something like this, because yeah. I think that's what we all uh, kind of grew up dreaming about. I think, and you and you hear those kind of stories from previous decades about these kind of players um, doing that kind of thing, and that way of doing it hasn't been lost. And I, it's, it keeps it very exciting. I got to yeah. say, you got to stay on your toes. But, yeah, you never know. But what's it was fun. It's yeah. very cool. One of the things we've been doing all weekend, we've been getting guitar stories. From everybody's kind of been bringing back their mm. their favorite guitar. Now mm. I know this is this is this your this, signature model. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not the original. Not the original. But no. can we talk about the original guitar that this yeah. one this one's based on? Yes. Tell me the story of that guitar. It's where you um, found it. All yeah, that kind of it, stuff. it's a 1966 Epiphone Century that I found in New York. Um, I was actually I'd flown out there to to meet the label that I ended up signing to, um, but I went into I was in New York. I hadn't been there before uh, to see any guitar stores. Um, and the first one I went to was a place called Matt Umanoff Guitar yeah. on Bleecker Street. Which is unfortunately no longer Very sad, yeah. No longer there. Shame. And I made sure I went in there, uh, I think it was last year it went. And, yeah, I, I, yeah. and since I first went in there, I made sure I was always going in there every time and they were great in there. But I went in, um, it's a really nice store. Uh, it was a really nice store and they've got uh, loads of great instruments but the vintage stuff is beautiful and all pretty special. There's a lot hanging behind the counter, a lot of hollow body electrics and some acoustics, a lot of great old like walnut and dark wood and uh, this red guitar sort of popped jumped out. Jumped off the wall. Yeah, it really jumped off the wall. And I, I, it really was that, you know, I, it was what I saw first that like excited me. And I thought that probably sounds great. I hadn't noticed the one P90. I noticed the P90 because I love P90s. Yeah. Um, I hadn't noticed the wooden bridge yet. Um, I hadn't noticed the wound G-string. So I kind of picked it up thinking that'll be a fun, almost sort of Chuck Berry style, you know, sort of hollow body like that, Alvin Lee style yeah. thing. Um, and it wasn't quite, but, so it, it, this guitar is a bit more of a fight than like a classic electric yeah, guitar. Yeah, the wood bridge makes it a little bit. Uh, and the yeah. wound G-string and, yeah. and everything. So, but I kind of, the first thing, uh, they, they sort of handed it to me, and because it's hollow, I said, can I try it? And because it's hollow, that, that I was just playing it, you know, like an acoustic. Board, yeah. and, I, and it resonates, and it has, it's not the deepest, but it has something about it that's very intimate, and if you sat in a bedroom on your own, it would have some scale to it, some sort of size. Uh, and the guy gave me one of those little fake cigarette packet amplifiers. Because yes, yeah. they're fuzzy, and they're kind of fun. There was nothing big plugged in in the store at the time. And I plugged into that and it was just cool. It was just, it was somewhere in that kind of Black Keys, kind of Jack White place. And I loved all of that. And it, as an electric guitar, I had to, like I say, I had to kind of fight with it more. 
something about that was fun and and and, and that exciting. guitar i mean it's kind of just that it's your guitar that's well, that that model and that and cherry that's just become yeah, it, synonymous with with james bay well has it made it on all the records yes yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh not every single track but more than even i realize sometimes or pretty much all of the first record uh most of the second and a, a, a load of the eps in between and it's it's always with me live i mean there was a time I've kind of I've done some traveling and I've collected some guitars. Yeah. It's an obsession we all know. Yes, we all. But um, with that, yeah. But it's still uh, there was a time when it, I was playing it on pretty much uh, every song in the set, which was um, kind of fun. And now I'm this guy who's changing guitars all the time, and I can't help it. I no, it. I, I understand <laughs> that too. Yeah, no. But it's 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 always around, and it it will always it will always belong. Yeah. There's so many great guitars here this weekend. Just to wrap up, is there anybody that you just can't miss while you're here or Mr. you're really excited to see mr clapton yeah all day long i mean there's loads Derek trucks uh john mayer uh robert randolph i love yeah. uh doyle um i saw bonnie Raitt yesterday Bonnie's whoa just still still yeah yeah cheryl and her band were amazing um the list is endless jeff beck got him last night marcus king probably one of the greatest experiences of my life marcus is that was outrageous special. yeah so but i'm i'm down for everybody yeah but Eric, I mean, come on. Eric all day. It's Eric freaking Clapton. Yeah. Dude, James Bay, nice one. thank you for coming and hanging out. We're backstage at the 2019 Eric Clapton Crossroads Festival. We'll see you guys again back here soon. Peace.